All right, y'all. So today, I'm here with my boy Rubio. We're going to be doing a stage one upgrade on the 2017 Golf GTI. Um, car is pretty much new, like 11,000 miles. So like these cars, like they're like stock pads, our garbage, a little bit of spirit of driving is enough to cook the brakes pretty easy. So what he has here is ECS tuning, stainless steel lines, got some DOT4 Bilstein brake fluid, Got some Stop Tech Sport pads, which we'll see how these goes, and some ES tuning slotted rotors. So, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead, uh, we're gonna dive straight into it, and we're gonna start with the front rotors, pads, uh, and lines first. And we got all of the brakes without the master cylinders. So, uh, what he has to do is take off these two 13 millimeter bolts in order to remove the actual caliper itself, right? And then once he does that, and then you need to remove the caliber mounting bracket bolt. So it's, and so one goes in here is a 21 millimeter, and then there's another one right here. Um, and it'll take a bit of force to get those off. So you definitely wanna have a breaker bar on hand. But once you get those off and the whole caliper mounting assembly will come out. Uh, if your brake line is off, you can just, you know, like swing the whole thing out. But if you do have your brake line off, do you need to grab something to secure it up here? And so it's just not hanging by your brake line. And so we got the caliber and the caliber bracket uh, all removed. So those, uh, and so those four bolts were removed. They're sitting over here. As you can see, stock calibers, nothing too crazy. So what we're gonna do is, and then we're gonna remove these 13 millimeter bolts in order to actually access the pads. But, but I'll show you how to do that on the reinstall of these. So, now, and to get the rotor off, we have to remove this Torx third bolt here or whatever, and then we'll be able to go ahead and replace the rotors, and then we'll get started with putting everything back together. All right, so now we got the stock rotor off. So, and being in this car is so new uh, and it has so little miles, it was super easy to remove that Torx bolt, and it was easy to take out the rotor. But if your car has a bit higher mileage, um, you might have to take like a small like hammer or mallet like to beat back the rotor in order to get it to come off of the hub. And also, if you have trouble like taking out that Torx bit, Kennedy, hey Kennedy, say hello. Hi. <laughs> yeah, so if you have trouble uh, in taking out the actual, the bolt that holds the rotor, you can put your Torx bolt inside of it and you can take like a hammer and then you can hit it a couple of times to try to loosen it up. Sometimes that helps, sometimes it won't. God damn it, Raimi, what are you doing here, guy? <laughs> so I feel kind of silly because I haven't even introduced Rubio. Hey, Rubio, I say what's up, man. Yo, I thought my boy Rubio. Uh, we'll be doing like more stuff on this car, just documenting his old build, and we'll have a review coming soon. Rubio is cleaning up the rotors, and he's separating uh, in the caliber and from the caliber mounting bracket. I'm going ahead and loosen up the brake lines. So, and the front brake lines are easy. So you have a 11 millimeter. Uh, I'm trying to think about what to call this, but it's 11 millimeter right here. And to take off this hose fitting and from the hard line to your soft line right here. And then from there is two clamps. And so you take out this clamp right here. And you can take a, a flat tip and you can pry it and pull it out like that. And then there's another hose clamp right here, which you do the same thing. As you see, I already got that one loose. And then you can go ahead and pull out the line. All right, uh, so... To reinstall the new uh, stainless steel brake line, it's just a reverse installation. So all I did was I put it through this holding bracket right here, put it through there, I tightened everything back up snug because you don't want to like strip the boat. And I put the retaining clips back in right here and right here. And that was it. So with the banjo boat, and we're going to wait to reinstall that when we put our caliper in. but you have to torque the banjo boat to 26 foot pounds, so that's the key part right there. Uh, if I sound a little bit tired, it's because I went out to the club last night and, and I was doing a little bit of drinking, a tad bit dehydrated, a little bit hungover, but we're still gonna get through this. We got the rotors installed. As you can see, everything fit up perfectly, so we put back in this Turks and this Torx 30 uh, boat right here. So a key note, I want to install them on these rotors, they are directional. They have a little sticker on it that says right and left. So you just want to make sure you put them on the right side. All right, and so I got the caliper mounting bolt all back installed. So 
The big takeaway is with these big 21 millimeter bolts right here. So you got to torque those 200 Newton meters, which is a pretty high torque spec. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change out the pads here. It's just simple. I'm gonna pop out the old one and put the new ones in like so. And then we'll work on reverse installing the calibers. And I'll show you guys the finished product. All right, y'all. So we ran into a bit of a hiccup. So I was going to install the new pads. And then we realized that they did not fit. And so my man Ruby over here, he ordered pads for a three series. So yeah, so we're gonna continue on with the old pads because there's nothing wrong with them. Uh, they're still like plenty of life. And he's gonna return the pads that he bought over here. And then he's gonna get those expedited so we can change those out at a later date. And in the meantime, he's just gonna have stainless steel lines and fresh brake fluid. So I guess it is what it is, it'd be all right. Room. <laughs> All right, so I got the calibers back installed. So now we just need to install this new brake line and banjo bolt. So pretty much what you have to do is you have to put a copper washer on this side and another one on that side, right? And then you go ahead and you reinstall it right there and then you need to torque it down to 26 foot pounds, so I'll go ahead and knock that out right now. All right, so I got everything all buttoned up right here in the front, everything tightened, torqued, and installed, except for obviously new pads, because that previously mentioned situation. But now we're gonna move on to the rear stainless steel line installation, so it's pretty simple, uh, simpler than the front in my opinion, so we get a good angle here. All right, so all I have to do is just untighten that right there, the hard line, take out the clip, and then undo, uh, focus, there we go. And then undo that banjo bolt right there and put a new line, so I'll go ahead and knock that out now. I'm not gonna go through it because it's pretty simple. It's, you know, it's very comparable to the front. And so I'll just show you guys the finished product and then we'll move on to the bleeding procedure. Woo. So we got the new line installed right here. Everything is tightened up, torque as you can see. ECS made a pretty good kit, but they did forget the rear banjo boat or whatever. So we had to reuse the OEM one. So. No big deal there, so we're gonna go ahead and hop into the bleeding process now. And moving on to the brake bleeding. So, in order to do this, we got this handy dandy air bleeding tool right here that we'll be using. So, all it does is you attach this hose to the nipple right here. Not sure if you guys can see, you probably can't see, but yeah. So, and then you crack it open, and you just hold the handle and start sucking. So, and with these Volkswagens, they have a uh, reverse bleed in order to most cars. So it's the front left, and then the front right, and then the rear left and rear right. I'm not sure why it is, but that's what Volkswagen calls for. And so Rubio is putting up the master cylinder right now with some press DOT4 brake fluid. And we're gonna go ahead and start the process of bleeding it up. So Rubio is doing the last caliper right now. Got this little air bleeder going. You can see the fluid running through right there. So I also forgot to mention that the bleeding of uh, the bleed screws actually are a 11 millimeter wrench also. So everything we used pretty much was 11 millimeters today. From taking off the brake lines to the bleed screws, all that good stuff. So next all we're gonna do is I'm gonna have them hop in. And we're gonna pump the brakes to make sure that we see no leaks and we're gonna double check everything's tight. And then once we verify that, it's all good to go. So I'm going to stop this vlog here. But I really do appreciate you checking out the video. And if you like what you saw, please do like and subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, please do hit that notification bell. But alright, I'm out.